In this Electronics and More video, I'd like to show you something that I was going to purchase a while back. And I decided not to purchase one because at the time, the price was a little high. And I also had a bunch of scrap components laying around, as well as scrap housings. And I decided to make something very similar to what's inside this box. I have a video showing what I made, if you haven't seen it. It's right up here, right hand corner, circle with the eye. Recently I was online looking at different items, and that's when I came across this, a 2000 watt Variac. This is a 120 volt version, and the price of this was absolutely ridiculous. I think what the company did to get the prices down so cheap for people in the United States, they must have put a whole bunch of these inside of a freight container to save on the shipping cost because the one you see right here was only $50. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to unbox it, show you what the unit looks like, test out the unit, and then we're going to open up the unit so you can take a look at the inside. It's very, very heavy. Alright, here's a closer look at the unit. Steel enclosure. Take a look at the top. Full control, wide range of voltage. Maximum current is 20 amps at 120 volts. And like all Variacs, depending where the winding is tapped, you can have a voltage output from zero to higher than the input voltage. Nice smooth control. Lighted power switch. Two receptacles you can tap off of when the voltage is adjusted to the desired voltage. And here is a screw and fuse. Let me give you a close up of the front panel and then we're going to unscrew this, take a look inside. Here's the fuse, 20 amp. Nice. Also included is another fuse right there. Over here you can see the voltmeter it goes above 150 if you use the full winding on the Variac. This unit is designed to be used continuously for up to 8 hours. Insulated resistance is greater than 10 mega ohm. Let me open this up. Let's take a look in here first. Alright, here's a look at the inside. You see the two receptacles are snapped into the steel. They applied some hot melt glue around the cord restraint for the power supply as well as the receptacles. Uh, that should be fine, but I probably would have used clear silicone instead. Ground wire to the receptacle, to the receptacle, and over to the chassis here. That's good. Wires appear to be soldered pretty good. The only one I would apply a little more solder to would be right over here. I think I'll heat that up with a little bit of flux. Let the solder flow into that one. The rest of it looks pretty good. Power supply wires appear to be 14 or 16. Let me see if I can see it on the wire here. This is a 2000 watt unit, so that's going to be drawing around 16 amps shouldn't have any problem handling that current. Now the fuse that's installed in this unit I believe is a fast blow 20 amp. To me I'd rather have a slow blow 15 installed in here. So I'm going to make this a slow blow 15. So swapping out the fuse and just applying more heat and soldering this connection looks pretty good inside here. Over here you can see that this is copper windings. There's the core. We're going to open up the whole unit in a minute. You'll be able to look inside. This connection here looks good. The enamel was scraped off the wire. This wire was wrapped around that wire and then soldered. All right, the screws have been removed along the bottom and the screw that holds the knob on against the shaft. Let me slide this off. Inside of the cover. 
Let's take a look at the wiper design. Rotate that over to here. These two screws here keep this whole wiper on the shaft. This metal piece here where the wire goes onto the wiper is bolted onto this plastic and then the plastic is held onto the shaft. Let me give you a different view looking at the brushes. This clip right here has two springs under it which push on these brushes. The brushes appear to be like a bronze material but take a look at the rest of the brush. Looks like a piece of carbon that pushes down in each spot. Looks like a good design. And if you wanted more tension on this brush, you would simply tighten the screw further, loosen this one, squeeze it down a little bit more, and you'd have more tension. Nice and smooth. And the wire was wrapped just enough to hit the stop here and make it to the stop there. Here you can see the two wires crimped. Each one leads to a brush. Underneath this metal, which keeps the shaft in the center, is a plastic or actually a rubber insulator between the windings and the metal. Let me show you one thing on the side. Over here is the beginning of the winding, and the end of the winding is over here. But you notice the other side of the winding is tapped right here. So if the wiper was moved all the way to right there, this is on the center, the carbon brush, all the way on with the red wire, all right? That would be the full 115 or 120 volt supply out of your receptacle. If you wanted higher voltage, you would simply keep rotating past that point and you can have as high as 130 or 140 volts. This is very useful if there's a low voltage condition. You can compensate by using the Variac. Let me put this back together and let's try it out. This is the voltage right here, 121.7 on the AC mains coming out of the receptacle. Okay, let me power it up. I don't expect too much accuracy from this gauge here, so we're going to be looking at the voltage output on the Mustool DMM. Okay, here we go. 19. Okay, so that's 12.8, one notch, 12.17, one notch. So it's around 0.65 volts. That's 10.9. Let's go one more. Yeah, so it's around 0.65 volts each little click. That's about half the winding. Now my AC voltage is 122 volts coming out of the receptacle. So let's turn this all the way to the 122. All right, 122. This is showing just a hair above 110. There is a little screw in here, I think, to adjust if I want it. Now I'm going to go to the end of the winding, and you're going to see how much this boosts the voltage. Here we go. Alright, so we gained an extra 30 volts AC on the winding. Let me connect something up to this now. Alright, I have a drill connected up. Let's turn on the power. Going to keep the trigger squeezed right over here. And slowly turn this. I'm going to turn all the way up to the 120, and then I'm going to increase until it's at the maximum of 150.
And that's it. As you can see, it works extremely well. And for the money, you can't beat the price. I don't mind having to swap out the fuse to a 15 amp slow blow or soldering that wire. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.